And this is West Michigan's Morning News. Steve Kelly, Brett Bikita, Rick Alban, Lauren Smith. Yesterday, Governor Whitmer revealed her first budget with reaction from the Republican side of the aisle this morning. State Senator Mike Shirky, Senate Majority Leader, thank you for taking time this morning. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. So after the budget dropped, what is your reaction, Senator? Well, I'm a bit sad that the, my governor hasn't been a little more creative in her solutions. Uh, she campaigned for the entire campaign on fixing the you-know-what roads, and uh, her solution was going back to some old, old styles of just let's just hose people with more taxes. And I don't think that's a, a, long, a sustainable solution, nor do I think it's a very creative solution. And so for and I guarantee you that if she had campaigned from the beginning on raising gas tax by nearly 50 cents, that I don't think she would have been elected. So there's a bit of a little bit of disingenuousness in it. But I will stipulate that I think we're still uh, still reaching for hitting the number we need to hit to maintain and start improving the road conditions. Uh, we acknowledged that back in 2015, and we took the first bite of that apple and raised about a $1.2 billion that's sustainable. And I think the legislature, in partnership with the governor, needs to take that to the next level. And I think the number is uh, – the, the number of $2.6 billion on a sustained basis seems to have reached a consensus level because it's similar to the number that Governor Snyder is and, and his research team uh, uh, arrived at. So I'm looking at uh, finding one point. Four to one point five billion on a sustainable basis, and doing it with the least amount of disruption on the families of Michigan. Senator, um, you'll correct me if I'm wrong on my numbers, but if I look at the budget, it looks like there's about five billion dollars in the transportation budget. About four billion of that would go to roads and, and bridges. Now, is that where we are? That's what the current spending level is, Rick. That's right. Okay, so um, if if you put another billion and a half or two billion dollars on top of that do we have enough projects in the hopper and enough crews and construction companies prepared to meet that need or do you create at some point artificial inflation that was a concern we had in 2015 which is the reason we chose to phase it in and i think that uh, the answer to your question is yes if we did it, do it too quickly uh, it'll end up being artificial inflation and a bit of waste and so I think the legislature, and I'm going to do my best to lead us in this direction, uh, though I'm just one vote, and that is to uh, essentially attack this from re- do a repeat of what we did in 15 and do it again maybe one more time in 19 or 20 to, uh, to uh, achieve the number that we're talking about. Senator, I'm going to throw something out that is completely uh, perhaps nonsensical, but I was thinking about this on my drive back from Lansing yesterday. You told me down in uh, your manufacturing plant uh, down in Jackson a a few weeks ago that you thought there was a window of opportunity, maybe a few months, that you and your colleagues in the Senate and over in the House and the governor might come up with a real way to reform auto no-fault insurance. And and follow me on this, and I, I get it, I'm getting in the weeds. But if something like that could happen, if you could achieve auto no-fault insurance reform that saved taxpayers, and I'm just going to throw out a number, $250 or $300 a year on their auto insurance rates, would it be easier then to say we will increase gas taxes to fix the roads as an offset? Is that a a grand bargain that could happen? You're not in the weeds at all, Rick. And uh, I've been uh, very public in saying that before we ask for any more money, we need to prove to people we can save them money. And uh, your characterization of our conversation is accurate, other than the fact that I feel even more strident and more confident that we're going to achieve that goal now, and it's even more important to do so. Uh, The question is, if we save the typical policyholder $300 or $400 a year, um, and I'm not using that number as a firm number yet because we still haven't got a, the estimates of what the reforms will add up to. Well, this is used $300. Um, the question is, do, they, do we have enough trust of people if they'll will voluntarily, willingly share that savings? And if the answer is yes, what's the best modality to do it? What's the best way to do it? And uh, those are the questions that we're probing right now. Uh, but I believe before we go to the latter question of 
of uh, asking for more. We have to prove that we're going to save them more. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky, a pleasure. Thank you for your time this morning. All right, guys. Stay in touch.